Hello world of YouTube and welcome to the second episode of my new segment that I debuted on the channel last month, Redacted, where I take a look at an album that has a good foundation but a flawed execution. And this week I'm actually going to take a look at the album that really inspired this series for the most part, one of the ones. Humans is one of them and this is the other one and this is the counterpoint to not all episodes are going to be cutting down albums, sometimes I'm going to be beefing up some slimmer records with B-sides, maybe taking out some of the A-sides, and there probably isn't a record that's more picked apart and dissected than an album by the Internet's Darlings. I'm talking about the mixed bag that is an album from Internet Darlings, Radiohead, The King of Limbs. I Like I said, this album, I'm sure, has been given this treatment before, and even probably in this order, because there's only so many combinations of songs you can keep and remove from the King of Limbs and add from the B-sides. Now, this album is pretty notorious for being pretty short, but having a slew of songs drop after its release um, in the form of The Daily Mail and The Staircase, and then the other single, The Super Collider and The Butcher. Now, one of the things I kept in mind when, when putting this album together is that I was relieved that there's no central concept or theme. There's only sonic ideas. And one of the core sonic ideas to this record is loops. A lot of this album is very loop-based. It's almost like trance jazz. I actually have a soft spot in my heart for this record. It has some of my favorite Radiohead songs. Some of my favorite Radiohead songs that weren't put on this record but were recorded this during this era were included on this album. In my version of it, and other people's versions of it, it was some of them are from their in the basement uh, live video DVD, which a lot of people consider to be the true version of this album. And I would propose that argument as well. That's it's a good rearranging of this record, but I'm proposing my own to be a counterpoint to everybody else on the internet and Radiohead themselves. And plus, I haven't really gotten a chance to do a deep dive on Radiohead. I love this band, and I'm finally getting to do it. I know back in the day, some of you guys want me to do a Radiohead discography review. That might still happen someday. But, until that day, let's go over my track listing. There's only nine songs. I used most of the stuff. I only cut a couple of tracks, and most of the B-sides ended up on here, except for The Butcher, and I'll go into why after I show you the track listing. in my final track listing. I didn't do a whole lot to break up what tracks, the order of what tracks come on the record. You know, Bloom, Bloom is still followed by Morning Mr. Magpie. It's just got a middle song. Uh, Lotus Flower still comes before Separator and Give Up the Ghost. It's just before Codex. You know, the, the only reason why I moved what songs I did is because they made sense in the natural flow of the record, which I tried to maintain, because this record paces itself pretty well on its own. It's just a little short, and some of the songs, like Little by Little and Feral, which are great cuts, don't get me wrong, I think Feral is a really cool interlude, and Little by Little does its loop-centric musicianship in a different way, but I try to keep the core ideas of loop-based music working in this style the forefront of the album outside of the Daily Mail. 
because that's the only track on here that doesn't really sound like the rest but fits some of the ideas present on the album. I think Bloom is a phenomenal opening track. Um, I wrote a review for In Rainbows that said it feels like this bleeds into, this follows up uh, videotape beautifully. I think that it starts the album off with some really good energy. It's one of my favorite Radiohead cuts ever. I think that it exemplifies the core ideals of this album perfectly. And I feel like Morning Mr. Magpie is a phenomenal follow-up to that by presenting the loop-based idea in a slightly different way. But I feel like if you're gonna hammer home that this is a loop based, you need an electronic cut immediately following Bloom without losing the energy. Or without abandoning the tight musicianship that's present on Bloom and Morning Mr. Magpie. And that's what Staircase does really well. It keeps the momentum going that carries a similar vibe to Bloom just in a very subdued fashion. And then I like the idea of kicking it up a little bit more with, with Morning Mr. Magpie to keep, the, again, the energy going. It's almost like creating a trance album out of the King of Limbs. That was kind of my mindset to this. But then I faced a problem with the end of it kind of grinding to a halt. That's why I threw Codex in there because Codex, it opens up with this really nice piano line that then builds up a little bit of energy. It also introduces the idea of more intimate songs like Give Up the Ghost that are loop based, but in a different fashion that I feel like little by little was trying to do, but didn't quite execute as well. Lotus Flower, just another really good cut that keeps the loop based ideas going. And I think is another great cut that exemplifies what is good about this album. Meaning that I like the dance centric nature of that cut and other ones on the record exemplified by the music video of Tom York doing his thing that then reaches a stylistic peak with Super Collider being this seven minute juggernaut of a very kinetically driven rhythm centric dance Radiohead song. I kept The Butcher off for the same reason I kept Little by Little off. Little, both of those are pretty damn good songs and I like them on their own regard, but I think Super Collider fits the ideals uh, of the sounds of the record a little better. I love that energy that this record presents and that's why I don't hate it as much as others. And I think that by building up to this Super Collider peak that then kind of dwindles out with the last couple of tracks, I mean, Give Up the Ghost and Daily Man aren't dance songs. Separator is, but it's a bit of a slower dance song. So I wanted to kind of build up to this peak of Super Collider before burning out with Separator and Give Up the Ghost, which again, I would have switched at with the initial album regardless. The only reason why I swapped Separator and Give Up the Ghost is because I've always thought Give Up the Ghost was a better closer to The King of Limbs and Separator because it, it, it builds up this kind of intimate sound that just washes over in this colossal wave of loops and does the ideas of the album in a different way that works. And I feel like if you're gonna close out this album that's really odd for Radiohead, it's almost stripped back in terms of high concept, that would be the way to do it. And the only reason why it doesn't end with that is because the Daily Mail fucking stomps. And I feel like if Radiohead would put that on the King of Limbs, it would make it a much better listening experience. It feels like a closer, a closer, because Give Up the Ghost kind of burns out and fades away welcoming in this non-loop based song. This is just a tight, well-written cut that concludes the album with just as big of a bang. It's just a more lively and well-orchestrated bang than Give Up the Ghost would have given the album. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's why I picked the songs I did. I tried to keep that momentum and shape. Like I said, the album paces itself pretty well. Every song ends and transitions into each other very well. And that's why there's a little bit of a, a problem with putting Super Collider or Separator right before Give Up the Ghost, but I think it works still in the case of the record. I like The King of Limbs. I know a lot of people are really rough on it because it's kind of this weird point in their catalog where they don't do anything new, but I feel like if you add these songs, if you give it this order, it one, makes it a more compelling listen, two, sounds a little more sonically cohesive because the Daily Mail has pianos, which are in codex. 
and has horns which rise up and bloom, which, again, gives this album a really good start and a really good finish. Like, those two parts alone are my strongest case for this organization, but I think given that Staircase flows well after Bloom, which Morning Mr. Magpie flows in after Staircase well, everything just paces, everything just comes together really cohesively. I feel like this is a much better listening experience for people. And I feel like King of Limbs isn't the best Radiohead to start with, but it's a really interesting piece of Radiohead's history that I wanted to dissect, put together, and turn into a video for this series, this segment, that then spawned this segment. Let me know what you guys think. I, I still don't know how to really format these, so they're going to remain on the shorter side until I can really find a way to tie everything together. Um, like humans, lyrically, it's hard to make this thing fit cohesively outside of there's some songs with characters and, you know, sadness. It's a Radiohead album. And I feel like th this organization makes it feel more like a Radiohead album. You know? But maybe that's just me. Let me know what you get think. If you guys have your own organizations, if you have your own redactions of The King of Limbs, let me know what they are. Um, I'll have linked in the description my version of it, both in a YouTube playlist and a Spotify playlist. I'll also have linked in the description my play the playlist for The King of Limbs Basement, live from the basement, like the track listing they have for that, because I do think it flows pretty well as well. Um, but I'm going to get out of here. I have been Viral Rack. You guys have good days, lots of situations, and I'll see you another day. I'm ready. I won't stop until I'm called the chubby Anthony Fantano. I'm not thick, but I'm thick.